Virginia Kelly Jokal. I'm the Director of Exploration and Production for the Gambia National Petroleum Corporation, which is the state-owned national oil company of the Gambia. And we are involved in matters of energy exploration, both renewable and conventional. I would have to be my first field experience, which was in the Maracaibo Basin in Venezuela. Um, so it was it, it was really exciting because first of all was realizing that you have to take a helicopter to work on a two week off two week on schedule, and then getting there and uh, realizing that I had to use a men's pair of overalls because they had not considered that women could be taller than men, and um, of course also it was a very defining and, and and challenging moment for me at that time, which makes it extremely memorable in some because I was breastfeed I was I had just had my first baby. Um, five months earlier and I was breastfeeding him and did not want my breast um, milk supply to dry up whilst I was um, working in the field. So I took my breast pump, I think it was a first, and I would take constant breaks to ensure that I kept my um, my breast supply up. However, coming up across, you know, all the drilling rig components, the platforms and the FTSOs were like amazing feats of seamless engineering and I remember being very fascinated despite all the like multitude of emotions I was going through, um, having been recently um, separated from, from my baby and still trying to keep up my breast milk supply. Oh, totally, the digital transformation, it provides new routes of economic empowerment for women in energy. It is such a unique opportunity to be able to expand the scope of flexible work for both males and females, but particularly in the African context females, because we juggle so much more than our male counterparts, we still bear the primary responsibility of um, house, house care and of community living. And so um, I anticipate that the advances in artificial intelligence, in machine learning, cloud computing, the usage of drones and semi sub submersibles, um, intelligent monitoring technologies such as remote sensing, uh, mapping and inspection devices, all these digital technologies will enable women from all backgrounds to gain access to um, to their work away from home, and again also um, so uh, sorry to their work away from the workplace, and um, also for learning as well access to resources to tools and networks that will help grow as entrepreneurs or as independent individuals. So the offshore energy industry particularly has recently in um, in like the last two or three years started deploying on-mand platforms and remote operation systems to improve efficiency, reduce the risk exposure of having humans on because they're extremely dangerous environments, um, and also, of course, reduce cost and emissions. And, and this is really amazing because I think about it in the next 10, 15 years um, from now, when, when if, if it becomes like a, no a normalcy, it means that I would not have had to sort of um, feel like I was choosing between being a nursing mother or the biological limitation of being pregnant, which has stopped me actually from going offshore before and working. So I would have the opportunity to actually sit at my computer at home or at work um, and work as well. So definitely um, the proliferation and advancement of remotely manned fields will lessen biological and working mother limitations for on-site engineers during periods of pregnancy and breastfeeding. Again, with the um, advent of advanced um, artificial intelligence software, we know that we're going to witness some major changes in technology. So it is really the right opportunity for women in the workforce to learn, to upskill themselves, to grow and continue to shine. An inclusive strategy, for sure. So for me, that's the most important. There must be a strategy of inclusion. We must involve more women in, their, um, in not just the drawing board of this just energy transition roadmap, but also in the implementation as well because for much too often in Africa we find that solutions are handed to us and then implemented by outsiders as well so we definitely need um, inclusion because we need to adapt the just transition concept to the context of the developing countries we are grappling with energy access so we have a very different reality than the rest of the world and of course we also need a multi-sectoral and intersectional collaboration and consultative approach as well, because we need we need energy providers on deck, we need private partners, we need NOCs on deck, deck we need resource companies, and we, of course, obviously um, need the environmental and climate change activists for, for being our conscience and pushing us to, to do better by, by, by the world standard and for the sustainable living of, of humanity and the world. And so greater governance and transparency, of course, in the deployment of financial resources need to be um, factored in and the involvement of the of the grassroots. Inclusion is necessary if we want a global, just and sustainable transition. 
because in general, having more women and diversity, we've seen it always leads to more innovation and better performance, even at the firm level, at country level. We've seen consistently studies by Harvard and other um, leading institutions show that boardrooms that have a greater um, participation and percentage of women in leadership and countries that have female president or greater percentage of female um, leaders consistently perform better. Naturally, um, we are more collaborative by nature. We are more adaptable to multitasking. And of course, also our measured approach ensures that we always bear in mind what are the impacts of any strategy on each and every sector of society because we are used to considering and taking along an entire household or community when we're making decisions, even in our daily lives. I would say have a can-do attitude. The world is your oyster. We have a long way to go, but also we've come a long way. The opportunities that I've had available to me were not available to my mothers and my grandmothers. And so we need to develop a can-do attitude. We need to um, realize that gender is not a barrier. And in as much as sometimes we have biological limitations, we can always find ways. We do not have to sacrifice family for work or work for family. And um, so there are always ways of juggling the two, of developing a support system. I would say also definitely inculcate a culture of excellence, competence, and continuous learning. Um, because what you need to do to always get ahead is to stay, um, to stay ahead. You must make sure that you are always improving on your skills. You're always upskilling yourself and you're always off a with um, what is necessary to get you ahead in your career or in your niche. And so I would always say develop your niche, craft it to the best level you can. And competence and excellence will always, always shine through and get you to where you need to be. Thank you.